Hoffman asks, why was the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania, together with more Watchtower corporations, not sued as well? The Watchtower Corporation of Pennsylvania was sued in the original complaint. However, when we recognized that the actual instruction and supervision and policies that put Candace and many other kids at risk were coming out of New York, which is at that time where the service department was run and the legal department was run, uh, then there was no legal basis to pursue Pennsylvania. It was New York that was setting the policies through the governing body. It was New York that was implementing the policies through the service department and the legal department. So Pennsylvania did not have any legal responsibility uh, as a corporation. All of this, of course, goes back to the governing body. They're the managing agents of each of the corporations that they act through. Datadog asks, are the Watchtower's legal team Jehovah's Witnesses themselves, and are they paid to represent their client? Uh, the paid part, I don't know. I'm not privy to the financial arrangements. The uh, attorney for the congregation, Mr. McCabe, uh, I know is a member of Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, the other attorney told the jury and uh, myself as well that he is not, Mr. Schnock, and the attorney that they have on appeal, Mr. Williams, I don't know. Splash and XYZ would like to know, what are the next key stages in this appeal process and how long will it likely take? The next step is that the Watchtower and the local congregation will file their opening brief in the appeal, and that is due uh, the second week of March, as we sit here now. Uh, we will then file a opposition brief somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 days after that. They will file a closing brief, uh, presumably 30 to 45 days after our brief, so now we're into May, June time frame. Then the Court of Appeal will set the case for oral argument. Uh, the schedule is hard to predict on when an oral argument will be held. It would not be unusual for that to be several months from the filing of the last brief. And after the oral argument is concluded, then the court has 90 days to issue its opinion. Uh, the opinion is subject to motions for reconsideration by any of the sides, either of the sides and the parties have the right to petition to the California Supreme Court and to the U.S. Supreme Court for hearing, but that is not a right to be heard. That is a petition, and if the California Supreme Court or the U.S. Supreme Court finds an issue that enough of their members feel is of uh, what we call precedential value, in other words, important enough issue in terms of the overall development of the law, then they can take on the case. But if they don't feel that there's any new issues here or any issues that are big enough to affect the general direction of the law, then they can deny a hearing and the Court of Appeal opinion will become final. So we're, we're still in for several months and possibly a couple of years worth of appellate review. Truth Seeker I Am asks, are you satisfied with the outcome of the case so far? Um, I am overwhelmed with the um, outcome of the case. Um, I, I was never expecting this um, type of response. Uh, I wish and I pray that um, more good can come of it uh, on many different levels. That being more people coming forward and, and starting cases. Um, the primary goal would be to have policy change. That's always the primary goal, first and foremost. And I think that when that day happens, I will feel like we've all succeeded. Hoffman asks, is the appeal effectively a complete retrial 
or is it left to the society to identify elements of the main trial which may have violated applicable laws? The appeal in any case is based upon the evidence presented at the trial. The trial's over, the evidence has been presented, now the Court of Appeal, and if it goes farther, other reviewing courts, will be limited to looking at that evidence and the judge's rulings to determine whether there was any legal error in the trial. But the facts have been found, the jury's finding of the facts is not subject to being disturbed or overturned as a finding by the Court of Appeal or any other reviewing court. The power of the jury to find the facts has been exercised. Datadog would like to know if Candice's abuse occurred after California became a mandatory reporting state, how does this impact on the Watchtower's defence? Reporting, mandatory or otherwise, is something that happens after abuse occurs. Our case is about protection to prevent abuse from occurring. We don't believe that the enforcement of mandatory reporting laws protects the kids who've already been molested. That's the problem here is that it's you know, shutting the barn door after the horse is out. Uh, it's not a case about reporting. There's not damages for reporting included in this case. Whether it was mandatory reporting or not wouldn't matter. Candice Conti has been convicted of taking and selling drugs and for being in possession of stolen goods. She also worked as a prostitute when she was a teenager. In answer to those accusations, um, I take full responsibility for my own actions. I, along with a lot of other people in life, have made many poor choices. Um, as far as that last accusation, uh, that is the furthest thing from the truth. Um, as a teenager, I graduated high school with great grades. I uh, was in a relationship for eight years uh, with the same person that started in high school. Um, all of that being said, none of these accusations, none of the truth of my own poor choices will ever take away what happened to me as a child. And more importantly, it will never take away from the truth that the organization's own policies still do not protect children and that is the biggest point. No matter what speculations, no matter what rumors come up, that will never change. Every single expert, and there were at least a half a dozen psychologists, counselor, therapists who testified in the trial, agreed that the abuse that Candace suffered as a child is what drove her to take drugs. Self-medication is one of the most common ref refuges um, that abuse victims take. It is statistically overwhelming numbers of correlation between childhood sexual abuse and turning to substances. During the trial, every, and the discovery phase leading up to the trial, every single corner of Candace's life was examined. And every piece of dirt that the Jehovah's Witnesses lawyers could find on her was turned up. None of that included the remotest claim that she ever engaged in any uh, kinds of activity, including prostitution, as the question says, uh, or anything else other than what we know from the drug-related conduct that she engaged in as part of her self-medication. Uh, so those kinds of attacks on her are where people who don't want to deal with the truth, and that's that child sex abuse is rampant, Jehovah's Witnesses, that the policies of secrecy add to that 
frequency of children being molested and that these kids are innocent victims of an organization that should know better and is hiding the truth. That's what this case is about. That's what Candace is about. And all these other kinds of attacks really show how low the people are who defend those policies and those perpetrators of abuse and the leadership of the church that continues to tolerate them. Drew Seeker I Am asks, do you plan on continuing your efforts towards protecting the children of the Watchtower Society? Fully, 100%. I think that, you know, whatever we can do in our power to continue to get the word out um, and to continue uh, to put pressure on organizations all over the world to change policies to protect children is a worthwhile cause.